Welcome to lecture 28, exercise 1. The challenge for this exercise is to write a console-based application that prompts a user for an hourly pay rate. While the user enters values less than 565 or greater than 49.99, continue to prompt the user. Before the program ends, display the valid pay rate. If you'd like to try this challenge on your own, please pause the video now and go ahead. If not, I'm going to solve it now. So there are, you could use two types of loops in this. And the way you know that you need a loop is because it says that while they don't enter that valid pay rate, keep on prompting them over and over to enter a valid pay rate. And that should hint to you that we need to use a loop. Now, we could use a while loop. And if we use the while loop, um, the only problem with that is that we will have to repeat the code that we saw in the examples earlier in the section. We would have to repeat the code, basically with the repeat the read line and the asking the user to enter in a valid pay rate. However, if we use a do while loop, we can get away with only having to write it once. So that's what we're actually going to do. Now, the first thing I need to do is create some kind of variable that holds in the pay rate that the, that the user enters in. Now, I don't want to put this variable inside the loop because I need to access it when we break out of the loop because it says, before the program ends, display the valid pay rate. So whatever they type in, I need to actually print that at the end. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go ahead and create that double pay rate. And I'm going to set it equal to nothing right now. Now I need to make that do while loop. So we enter the do loop. Now remember, the, the do while loop basically can guarantee an execution. It guarantees at least one execution of the body. Now, the while portion is going to be while, and it says, while the user enters values less than 565 or greater than 49. So while that's true, we keep on repeating. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that. While pay rate is less than 5.65 or pay rate is greater than 49.99. 49 so if that is true, then we'll keep on repeating. Now, inside of the actual body of the loop, this is where we ask them to enter in a valid pay rate. So, on that right line, please enter a valid pay rate. So, we ask them to enter that valid pay rate, and now you have to read it in. And when we read it in, we're going to read it into this pay rate variable. So, I'm going to say pay rate equals uh, double dot parse console dot read line. And it's double dot parse because I need to convert into the double. So if they type in 5.5, um, that's that that 5.5 is stored as a string, and I convert that into a double using double dot parse. So now it will keep on doing this. It will keep on asking for a valid pay rate if this condition is not true, or if that condition is true. Once it's not true, thus meaning it is a valid pay rate, because this is the condition if it's not a valid pay rate. So if it's in between this range and it's true, it will break out of the loop, and then we'll come we'll come down to here. Once we're here, it says to simply display the valid pay rate. So that's just the pay rate. So I'm going to say the pay, the valid pay rate that you entered is placeholder pay rate. So if you go ahead and run this, it says please enter a valid pay rate. So let's say $60. No, that's not valid. Um, Four dollars? No, it's not valid. See, I did the upper and the lower. Hundred dollars, not valid. One dollar, it's not valid. The only valid is in between that range. So let's try ten dollars, maybe. And the valid pay rate that you entered is ten. So as you can see, if you're not in that range, it keeps on prompting the user to enter in that valid pay rate. Once they do, and make and, and whatever value they enter in that makes this condition false, then they'll break out of that loop. So I typed in ten. So is 10 less than 5? No. Or is 10 greater than 49? No. So that is false, so it breaks out. But when I typed in 60, for example, is 60 less than 5? No. Is 60 greater than 49? Yes. And that true meant it keep on going. Because remember with an or statement, only one condition has to be true to make the entire thing to be true. So just because this hand, because this side was true, it made the entire thing to be true with or. If that was an end, then they both would have to be true in order to hold, in order to make the entire thing true. So that's it for this exercise. If you got this right on the first time, good job. The next one's gonna be slightly harder.